Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this new motherboard from ASRock. This is the ASRock Z87 Extreme 4. We'll start off with a closer look at the retail box. This is a Z87 motherboard, so that's a Z87 chipset from Intel. And uh, per the specs of the chipset as well as the socket we have, that's going to be compatible with Intel's fourth generation core processors, aka Haswell. Uh, the 1150 socket is only compatible with this series of uh, CPUs, so don't try to get this motherboard and use it with, say, a Sandy Bridge or an Ivy Bridge socket 1155 CPU. You also get support for AMD two-way or three-way Crossfire X. You get support for NVIDIA two-way SLI. Uh, Windows 8 ready, of course. Uh, you also get HDMI as well as DTS Connect audio. There's a ton of stuff here on the back, so I'm going to try to go over it as quickly as I can for you guys. Uh, first off, Purity Sound. They're using the Realtek ALC 1150 uh, audio codec chip, uh, and that has a 115 decibel signal-to-noise uh, differential, uh, which is pretty nice. Uh, so excellent bass, less sound distortion, more details, and supports up to 600 ohm headphones by way of the uh, integrated amplifier as well, which is very nice for uh, an onboard audio solution. You also get Intel Ethernet, so high quality Ethernet solution. Uh, you do get HDMI in as well as out. Oh, I had not even noticed that before. Connect your PC and another device to one monitor and toggle between the primary and secondary screen without replugging the connectors every time. That's a nice feature. I have some detailed specs over here on the right. I'm not going to go over those individually, but they should be available on the product page. Let me go over some of these other uh, items that are listed here. Uh, high quality components here, so premium gold capacitors made in Japan. Uh, you also get digital power delivery. Uh, you get a 12 phase power delivery designed for your CPU power. Uh, you get ASRock's A tuning capability, so that's a multi purpose software suite. New interface uh, provides new features and improved utilities, including X Fast RAM, OC Tweaker, and a whole lot more. You get 4K supply, uh, display support uh, up to 3840 by 2160 pixels via the HDMI connector uh, integrated on the board. Triple monitor setup, which is another new feature of Haswell uh, and the integrated H Intel HD graphics within Haswell, you can actually do three displays uh, using your onboard iGPU. Uh, you also get uh, special distortion-free slots, uh, which is a new, new design for the memory slots. XFast 555, which is referring to their XFast RAM, LAN, and USB uh, for up to five times the performance boost. And respect, respectfully for all of those. You also get the ASRock Fantastic Tuning, so you can use that to tune your fan speeds when you have them connected to the motherboard to get the optimal fan speeds with minimal noise. Uh, Windows 8 uh, fast boot technology, so you can boot in less than 1.5 seconds. That is, uh, boy, there's an asterisk there that's indicating the boot time may vary with different configurations. But if you're using Windows 8 uh, and this new motherboard, you're going to get extremely fast boot times, particularly if you pair it with an SSD. Uh, you get a restart to UEFI button that will allow you to easily reboot to the UEFI because that's sometimes very difficult to do when you're booting in 1.5 seconds. Uh, dehumidifying technology to help keep the board clear of humidity when you're powered off. And ASRock OMG, that's online management guard, not oh my god. Um, and you can use that to uh, set an internet curfew, for example. So if you are doing a system build for perhaps a minor or a daughter or a son, you can uh, get yourself a little bit more uh, online control. Also USB key technology, so you can use that USB key to log you in when you first connect to your computer and uh, easy driver installation as well. Taking a look inside the retail box, we have accessories as well as documentation. I shall lay these all out here so you guys can take a closer look. I'm going to start with this because it's mysteriously wrapped up. My guess is that it's an SLI bridge. Yes, yes it is. Okay. SLI bridge, there we go. So if you are going to go with a two-way SLI configuration, you can use this bridge, and it is one of the rigid PCB style bridges, so that gives a little bit of more support to your cards when they're plugged in as well. For serial ATA, you get a total of four serial ATA cables. Uh, you have, it looks like, two of them, which will have a 90-degree bracket on one side and a straight plug on the other side, and then two more that will have straight plugs on either end. They're all black. They're all compatible with SATA Rev 1, 2, or 3, so don't worry. If you're plugging this in, it will work with a high-speed SSD and little clasps to hold them in place. Here's your I.O. shield for the back of your case, some color-coded ports to tell you what is what. Make sure you install this before you install your motherboard. You also get your driver disc as well as an ASRock case badge. Let me turn that right set up. Powered by ASRock case badge if you're into case badges. Also, the driver disc itself. Uh, chances are there's going to be updated versions of these drivers available from the ASRock website, but this is especially particular if you need, uh, say, a LAN driver so you can connect to the internet in the first place. You also get the ASRock 
quick installation guide. This is multilingual, lots of different languages. There's a little insert here because this does feature Intel's remote wake technology and uh, it's activated via software called Mesh Central, so a little bit of extra information about that. But this will give you a layout of the motherboard, motherboard and tell you what's what, for example, as well as a list of all the components installed and uh, essential to keep that on hand while you're doing your build. Also, you get the software setup guide since software is included, as mentioned, on the retail box uh, to do stuff like OC Tweaker. And uh, you can use this manual to better familiarize yourself with the ins and outs of those. Lastly, the motherboard itself. And here's a look at the Z87 Extreme 4 motherboard itself. As you can tell, uh, Azeroth has gone with a primarily black color scheme. You have some sort of gold highlights, uh, and for instance, the Purity Sound logo, some of the uh, text on the heat sinks, as well as the gold caps, of course. Uh, let me point out, actually, let me flip around to the back first. That's my, that's my MO. All right, here's a look at the back so you can, get, can kind of get a better look. Uh, the brown PCB. Uh, we also have Phillips head screws mounting the heat sinks on the board, so you can remove those if it does become necessary, or at least remove those a bit more easily. Uh, looking at the front of the board, I wanted to point out the fan headers that you have available. You get a total of six. Uh, so a couple for the CPU up here. You get a four pin and a three pin for CPU fan A and B. Uh, you also get uh, three three pin chassis fan headers right here in the middle. Uh, all kind of grouped in the same area. And then finally get one more four pin uh, chassis fan header, which is down here. And that is a four pin, I just said that. Uh, so four pin PWM there, three pin on the rest of the system fan headers. Uh, let's start off with a closer look, or let's continue, I should say, with a close up look at the motherboard. I'm gonna start down here in the bottom right. And uh, let me lift up the board just a little bit so you guys can actually see. All right, so first uh, you'll notice you get a surface mounted power and reset button. Very handy if you're doing an external build. You also get a clear CMOS button right next to that. You also get a clear CMOS header right up here as well as a BIOS selection header. So uh, you'll note that there's two BIOS chips right there. Uh, you also get a speaker header right there. So that's kind of separated from the rest of the front panel headers which are right here. Uh, an extra power LED header as well in case you have a three pin or three, three pin uh, spaced header rather than two pin. You also have a debug LED right there, so extremely handy if you're getting your system up and running for the first time to have the debug LED so uh, you can tell if you're uh, having failure to boot or something like that what is actually going wrong. You also notice uh, USB 2.0 headers right there, you get three of them, uh, so each one of those can support two USB ports for front panel or rear panel connection. Uh, there's that chassis fan header that I already mentioned, the four pin. Uh, and then you have a COM port as well, so you can connect up a COM port. Uh, this is an infrared header. And then uh, over here on the left side, you have your purity sound audio componentry. So let me just set this back down. Uh, so you'll notice, of course, the gold caps. Uh, you also have your HD audio connector right there, so you can use that to connect for uh, front panel mic and headphones, uh, and then you get your purity sound, which is providing a bit of electromagnetic shielding over your actual audio chip, which again is the Realtek ALC 1150. Next to that, or I should say to the right, you'll notice your PCI Express area. So uh, starting off, you get a couple X1 PCI Express slots. Uh, you also have three full-length X16 PCI Express slots, I should say physically X16. They're actually wired up for uh, X16, X8, and X4. And you have some various configurations that you're going to have depending on what you have connected. Uh, before I talk about that, I also want to point out these two kind of slightly bigger uh, PCI uh, legacy ports right there. So if you have an older PCI device, you can connect it. Uh, now, if you're talking about video card connection, which is chances are what you will be connecting to uh, at least one of these PCI Express connectors, uh, top one here is going to be X16. That's going to be where you want to plug in a single graphics card. If you're going with a two-way configuration, you'll want to use these two ports, uh, and you'll end up running at X8 and X8 on both of those, and that's how you can set up two-way Crossfire X or two-way SLI. If you do happen to be interested in a three-way Crossfire X configuration, you will have that available by using all three of these ports. Uh, just bear in mind you're going to be running at X8, X4, and X4. That pretty much wraps it up for PCI Express. Moving on over to the right, you'll notice the ASRock logo on your heatsink for your Z87 chipset. Uh, the Z87 chipset is doing lots of stuff on this board, but it has a pretty cool PCH or peripheral controller hub built in, and that's actually going to be controlling the left six of these uh, gray ports that you see right here. 
the final two on the right here are controlled by an add-on as media SATA Revision 3 controller. Uh, these here on the left are going to be your fastest since they're natively controlled by the chipset. Uh, you also get your RAID functionality there, so you have RAID support for RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, or RAID 10. And again, all of these being PCI, I'm sorry, all of these being Serial ATA Revision 3 uh, means they can do 6 gigabits per second. So um, whether you're plugging in an IDE hard, uh, not IDE, whether you're plugging in a mechanical hard drive or whether, whether you're plugging in a state-of-the-art uh, current gen SSD, uh, you're going to get the maximum performance that's available. Moving along up the side of the board, we have a couple USB 3.0 uh, headers on the board, and those are both the 20 pin right there. Uh, so you can have plenty of USB 3 front panel connectivity. I like that we're finally starting to get more than one of those available on motherboards. Above that, you'll notice your 24-pin main power connector, so make sure you have that plugged in from your power supply. To the left of that, you have your DIMM slots. So you have four of them here. These are DDR3 compatible, of course. They're the tall slots that go top to bottom. They're also dual channel capable, uh, so make sure when you're purchasing your memory you get, you get sets of two so you can uh, make use of that dual channel functionality and you can reference the uh, motherboard manual to indicate which uh, sets of two you should plug in. If you're going with four, uh, a set of four is also a nice option to go with to make sure that your, uh, your JDAC values or your XMP values are more suited for that type of configuration. Uh, speaking of the memory, you also have up to 8 gigs per DIMM available, so if you do populate all four with 8 gig DIMMs, that will give you 32 gigabytes total. And then finally for uh, memory speeds, you have official support from Intel on this platform for up to 1600, and then if you want to go overclock speeds beyond that, you can actually push all the way up to 2800 or 2933. Bear in mind that's going to be heavily dependent on the memory that you purchase as well as the processor itself because those will vary as far as how far it can uh, overclock your memory because the memory controller is built into the processor. But that's a topic for another video. I also want to point out while I'm here, I almost missed it, that you have if I can get this little black cap off. Okay, you have a USB 3.0 port right there on the board. It's actually a USB A uh, header on it. So a couple different things you might do with this. Uh, if you are using this for some high end, uh, I would say editing or um, more enterprise level software, some of those come with a dongle uh, that you actually need in order for the software to work. So um, this gives you an internal place to mount that, which can keep it a bit safer from being plugged in outside your case. Another option here would be if you have a case that came out in that interim time between when USB 3 came out but before they had actually made this header, you have some that have a pass-through cable um, coming from the front of the case that you need to route out the back of your case to plug into uh, the back. Well, you can just plug that in right there and give yourself some front panel USB 3 if you have an older case, but a couple options to do there. Uh, let's continue on with the CPU socket itself, which is right here. And again, I must reiterate that this is a socket 1150 uh, connection. So um, don't try to install a socket 1155 processor, such as a Sandy Bridge or an Ivy Bridge. You need the new Haswell uh, socket 1150 CPUs to go right there. Uh, apart from that, we also have power delivery for the CPU, so you'll notice uh, some of the power phases up here. Uh, you do have some, uh, some chokes right there, as well as uh, the caps you can see. MOSFETs are beneath these two uh, pretty sizable heat sinks. Just to give you a closer look at that, you got the Z87 Extreme logo. Just to keep your uh, power delivery componentry nice and cool to help keep your overclocks more stable. Finally, for the front of the board, you have your uh, supplemental 8-pin uh, CPU power connector, so again make sure you plug that in from your power supply so that you can run your system, and particularly if you're going to overclock. Okay, uh, let's finish off with your I.O. here at the back of the board. So first off, you got a PS2 connector right there for a uh, keyboard. You also have a couple uh, USB 2.0 right there, so another great place to plug in a mouse or a keyboard. Uh, your connectors for video are located right here, so you have a DVI-D, that's digital only, you also have an analog 15-pin uh, D-sub for uh, analog VGA connection. You also get uh, HDMI as well as DisplayPort. And the HDMI and DisplayPort uh, are capable of 4K output at 24 hertz. Uh, if you are going to be going for 60 hertz, you can do up to 2560 by 1600. Uh, you also have, as pre oh wait, there's another HDMI. You actually have five display port, there are display out outputs on this board. So HDMI, HDMI, display port as well. Uh, and again, you can do three displays uh, supported just with your iGPU there. So that's another cool feature of the new Haswell platform. 
Uh, you also have four more USB 3.0 ports there on the back. You get an eSATA port right there. Uh, your RJ45 connector, and that is for your Intel Gigabit Ethernet. Uh, and then finally, you have your analog as well as an optical toslink connection there for your integrated uh, Realtek ALC 1150 audio. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been our unboxing and overview of the new ASRock Z87 Extreme 4 motherboard featuring the Z87 chipset and the 1150 socket for Intel's fourth generation core processors. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed this video, you should hit that like button and let us know. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Newegg TV. We'll see you all in the next video.